I think that it's always important to look for trends in anything you're collecting. So when it comes to ancient coins, since this is the ancient coin podcast, <laughs> we, uh, thanks Mike. <laughs> so we, you know, I'm constantly representing clients in auction. I'm buying an auction. I'm watching the trends. I can see what's happening and see when things start to move. And I get a feel for things based on what's happening from auction to auction year by year. And so you can see, well, okay, well, we all know Greek silver has been very hot for a long time. Roman gold, not so hot in certain areas. I see some of it starting to pick up, but you see certain things like we've talked about it in past episodes, certain raw coins have gone up and that are common have gone up in price because of the slabbing market, because you get people that, oh, here's a big segment of coins that are interesting that I can buy for X amount, put them in slabs and make three times my money. And so, because a lot of them will come with nice surfaces and I can get them into nice holders and make money off of them. And so you have to watch for those trends because one example is like the Macedonia under Roman rule. Those coins were a $500 coin. Now when they're really great, they're bringing $1,500, $2,000 for high grade. And that's, it's still a $500 coin. The same is true for the Mark Anthony Legionary Denary, common as can be, but high grades for a while were bringing really crazy money. I'm actually seeing them start to soften the, a little bit. So the other ones was like the Octodrams of Egypt. They were going for ridiculous prices because of the slabbing market and they were paying like forty five fifty thousand dollars for some of them and they weren't worth that and now they're starting to soften and come back down even heritage is not getting those runaway prices they once were why because they have satisfied their market they've saturated it because when an auction house like heritage you know they're there to make money and that's why you don't see a lot of bronze coins you see a lot of high designated starred coins in their sales because they want to get crazy money right. and so they know they've got a large group of people that are looking for those coins and it doesn't matter what the coin is is they just want to make sure that it has a star five 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 and so at the highest level the Cresos heavy staters those were going for hundred ten thousand dollars now they're coming back down to 50 which is still high but more in line where they should be and so again you have to see what heritage is doing you have to see what the telemarketers are doing the high-end ones you have to see what the auctions are doing and where you know see where what's hot what's not and know when to strike in certain areas like even like decadent Grams of Syracuse were going for really crazy prices. And every once in a while, you'll still see like CG list one for a hundred thousand. You're like another hundred thousand dollar decadram. Those were $25,000 coins, $30,000 coins 15 years ago. So it's changed a lot, but still, I think that a decadram should be anywhere from 30 to 50. I think anything over 75, it really has to be a special coin. It really has to be special. So, cause again, decadrams aren't, they're not rare. They're very common. So watching these trends in any Anything you collect is really important. The best place to do it is on Coin Archives or AC Search, and just look and see what the prices realize are. Watch watch the auctions and just see, and you start to learn. You know, like if I get a coin in now and I'll bring it to my dad, and he'll say, "Oh, it's this price," and I said, "No, no, 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 no more. Prices have changed." He's like, "Really?" And I'm like, "Yeah, they're going like the Cilician Tarsus Staters. Those were going that was nine hundred and fifty thousand dollar coin, and now they're going for two thousand dollars. So if I get one, I don't." Don't necessarily want to price it at 2000 but maybe i'll price it at like 16 or 1700 under the top price but not max it out and still i'm running a buyer bid so i might sell it for less so but i have to be conscious so i know how to price my coins and i need to be conscious so i know how to represent my clients who i'm bidding for as well so that they're successful and so when you're watching all those things as a dealer you get a feel for it you should do it as a collector as well and i think a lot of collectors do do it but i have a lot of collectors come to me and say what's hot what's not and you know some Sometimes I hate giving those. I don't you know, I've like, got a nice answer for you that you can give them. Tell that? them to stay abreast of the market because the trend is your friend. Well, you can't guarantee the trends either. That's the other problem. No, it's but all it's in the, moment. the trend is your friend. It's like, it's going to tell you where things are going, but you got to keep an eye out for what's going on. Right. Well, it's funny too, because, you know, like I have friends that are collectors that say to me, is there any good deals in this auction coming up? <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. Yeah. Why would I tell you if I did? <laughs> well, you know, the thing is, is that you don't know if it's a deal until you bought the coin. Right. And, you know, but most... even if you thought something was flying under the radar, it's like, why would you just like, oh, well, here, you know, it's like, yeah. why don't you just take it? Here, take my profit. Yeah. 